Good morning, everyone. Um, just want to first of all start off the day by saying thank you to all of you who have already joined in. Some still trickling in as we're getting going here, but um, really excited um, about today's webinar. Um, we've got the privilege of having uh, the VP of Product Development over at Silac, Carrie Freeberg, on with us today. Uh, that's a real treat for you all because she's going to be digging into the new Credit Suisse Raven Pack that uh, Silac has recently put on their product lines. So we're really excited to have her on the line. She's going to get into a lot of the details that um, may not matter as much to some people, but I think it's really good to know what goes really into these index and how they're working through different situations. So really excited to have her with us today. Uh, sad part for you guys is you got to listen to me for just a couple minutes here up front as I go through some housekeeping things. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name's Laura Johnson. Been with IMES for half my life. Um, about nine years I worked on the admin side, been on the sales side for almost six years now. So um, anytime you need help on an annuity case, don't don't hesitate to give me a call. Happy to help on any of those. So um, I am just gonna, whoa. I am just gonna go through a couple intro slides here for those who might be new to IMES. Um, it, as we go through today, I'll be monitoring the questions box. Um, so if you have questions for Carrie or myself, you know, in regards to the things we're covering, go ahead and type those in. And then I am gonna have a couple poll questions I'm gonna throw up throughout the presentation today. Um, two of them I'll do up front ahead of time. And then when Carrie's done, um, I'll throw a poll question up as far as if you wanna get contracted with Silac and if you want the information on the product. So um, just be mindful of those. The quicker we answer, the quicker we, uh, can move on to other slides. So I'm going to start off with talking about a couple in a incentive, say that five times fast, um, programs for you here. For those of you who are brand new to IMES or maybe considering joining IMES, um, this is a, a new producer bonus is what I call it. A uh, great way to just kind of jumpstart your time here at IMES by helping put some dollars back in your pocket. So really what this is, is you've got six, from the date you get contracted with us, you got six months to qualify. As you can see, we've got five different tiers of different prizes you can get based on the production you do. Um, but really the goal with this is to say thank you for those first pieces of business. Thanks for giving us a chance and let us prove ourselves to you um, by helping you with some marketing as well. So it could be anything where from cash to an iPad, you know, a lot of people at that $250,000 level use that $2,000 for marketing reimbursement really great program there good way to get help on a lot of marketing stuff you know we've got all sorts of different things available as you can see so uh, again it's six months to qualify um i will mention that if you're writing fixed business it counts half points so a hundred thousand would really count as fifty thousand i always gotta make sure people know that and then um, there are some restrictions as far as like controlled business doesn't count toward it and stuff but if you're curious where you stand give your marketer at IMS a call they'll be happy to uh, get that uh, information over to you. After you're done with your new producer bonus program, we move everybody into a marketing reimbursement program. So for all the business you're writing here at IMES, you're earning marketing dollars. Um, so you got an account over in accounting here that they keep track of um, with your, your uh, totals. Anytime you got marketing expenses, you send in the receipts, we reimburse you for half that cost. We think it's really important to have... Um, the agent share in the cost of his marketing. If you got a little skin in the game, you tend to do a little bit more work into it. So, you know, you got a thousand dollar receipt, send it in, we'll send you a check for 500. I'm gonna continue to do that till your account's been depleted. Um, but as you see here, you know, 100,000 of annuities gets you $100. Um, every 100,000 of single premium life, we do a ton of that around here, would get you $200. And for every 10,000 of life targeting gets you 200. So you're always earning marketing money. Um, and that can be used internally with our creative services, or you can, like I said, send in receipts for things you've paid for. Um, another program we've got is a referred producer program. If you've been in the business any length of time, referrals are as important to you as they are to us. We always appreciate those. Those are very much welcome. I know some of my uh, best recruits, you know, have gotten several referrals off of those and those you know that just really helps me build my block of business so just like it helps you guys build same with us so appreciate those referrals and what we like to do is kick it back to you a little bit so you know when your referee gets contracted it's 50 bucks 
they write a piece of business that's 100 and then you're going to earn a little bit of a bonus as you can see the different payouts on all the business they write so that is paid out quarterly write some pretty big checks i know these are stephen charles's favorite checks to write so um if you got anyone that you think might benefit from the services we've got available shoot your marketer at IMS a call and they will be happy to follow up with them uh part of our name insurance agency marketing service service is the number one a key here at IMS. i mean that's um what we strive to do every day is be number one when it comes to service we're not trying to be the biggest fmo we just want to be number one when it comes to that that includes picking up the phone every time you call uh, if you call you know that we've got a three ring guarantee you know with before it rings three times on your end someone here is picking it up live uh, we do that for a reason no voicemail no automated service you know if you call and leave me a voicemail and i'm out sick today you may never know that and you you have to wait a whole nother day to get your answer um, whereas when you call in and hey she's out sick today what can I do to help you know that's really should be the next question out of any of our mouths when we're answering that phone so really want to make sure we get your questions answered when you need them answered get you the things you need uh, we're going to help with anything from everything from case design getting you the forms verifying your training Amber and her team do a great job on what we call submission to commission support that means from the time you write that app have questions on filling it out to getting it submitted and scrubbed, to following up on it every two to three days till your business has been paid and you've got the policy in hand. You know, her, the ladies on that team do a very good job for our agents. If we can take that off your plate, that just keeps you in the field doing what you do best. Um, and then we do have paperless contracting as well. So um, we are on Insurance Bay, pretty well known contracting portal. So, um, very easy to get contracted once we have you in insurance bay on our system hey laura i need to get appointed with the theme hey i need to get appointed with whatever carrier i can send an email over to contracting and we get that done for you um i'm gonna just skip past this page because it's gonna go to another page that tells you all the companies we've got on firelight we're really excited to have now a single sign-on access to firelight on our website um it's under the e-app solutions uh, what it is 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 a one-stop shop where you can do majority of your e-app solution or your e-apps all in one spot. Carrie, I know we got your name still on here is equitable. We'll get that updated to site like though. But um, we are excited. It makes it really easy. And if you're doing them on our website, the best part is you can call in and Amber and her team can actually see where you're at along in the process because you're stuck at 99%. You can't figure out what question you answered wrong. They can jump in, look at it, take a look, say, okay, you missed this on this page and you can get back to it. So doing it on our website gives us the access to help you out with it. Once you submit it on our website, it actually comes back to us first. So we can scrub it and then we submit it to the home office from there. So um, really excited to have that on there. So now you can do um, you know, your annuity, life, and your Medicare apps all in one spot. Uh, if you haven't worked with our creative team at all, I encourage you to do that. You know, um, Sean, Jacob, Russell, Ryan, Chance do a great job for all of our agents, you know, between anything from a logo design, business card design, to doing personal websites, to doing digital marketing, social media marketing. Maybe you're looking to do a newsletter. You know, we have the capability to do all those things in-house. Um, I am going to share a website with you. It's not on the screen, but if you want to jot this down and check out their portfolio, it's imscreative.com. I-A-M-S creative.com is their, their website page where you can go out, kind of see some design work, some websites we've put together, some of the, you know, postcard logo designs we've done. You know, you can submit a request out there. So, you know, if you do have a uh, something you're working on right now on the cre or looking to have the creative team do, you can also answer this poll question, yes. Just if you have a, maybe looking for a website or you need a logo design, uh, maybe looking to do a newsletter or anything, if you put yes to this, what that's gonna do is generate a phone call from someone on my creative team, just call them to reach out to see what they can do for you. So if um, you guys can answer that question, we can get on to the next slide. But yeah, do a, they do a great job for our agents over there. All righty. Got some slow respondees out there. 
All right, I'm going to go ahead and close that so we can get going here. Um, let's just talk for a second about the website. Um, our website is www.imesinc.com, as you can see here. Um, a couple things I'm going to talk about with that. Um, is we've got a lot of great tools. We got everything from term quoting to if you're doing the annuities, we've got annuity rate watch now available on our website. We've got forms that you can pull applications on there. You know, like I said, we've got our eApp solutions tab now, which has Firelight, iGo eApp, and Connect for Medicare. Um, you know, as far like I said, annuity rate watch, life quotes, everything available out there. One other thing I think is really key out there is our sales resource library. It's under the support tab. It's a library of resources for all of you in the industry who, you know, anything from fact finders to client presentations to um, you name it, it's out there. I mean, what is a fixed annuity? Well, you go under client presentations and there's a 10 page document about everything you need to know about a fixed annuity. So really great information. If you ever want a little run through of the website, give your marketer or myself a call at IMS. I'm happy to walk you through it. Wealth management, big part of our business now. You know, when DOL part one, five years or four or five years ago was going around, Stephen Charles said it was time. So we did start our own RIA. Uh, Charles Jr. and his team do a great job for our advisors. Um, really built this over the last four or five years. Um, so we do have an RIA if you're 65 CFP, looking to maybe get your 65 his team can definitely help you. But there's one thing I'm gonna mention here is we've got a couple of unique situations. We do have a client division as well. So a lot of agents maybe are getting toward the end of their career, don't wanna study for a 65, or maybe you just never had your desire to have your securities license, okay? Well, let me just give you an example. You go into a household that has 500,000, right? And Silex says they're only gonna take 350 of it. What are you gonna do with that other 150,000? if you're not doing anything with it you're just allowing another advisor to have potential of getting in there and potentially still in your client so we do think it's important to have a client division here as well so we did bring on a new advisor zach reeg um and he runs the client portion of our ria so if you've got a referral you got someone who's out there um that might you know have some funds that you need to put in some sort of investment because they can't put all of it into annuity Give me a call. I'll get you connected with Zach, and uh, he can handle that client for you. The nice thing about having him handle it is you have no advisor coming in to steal that client from you. It's a nice, safe way to keep the money at IMS, know that we've got it, and that it's not at risk of being lost to another advisor. Depending on the state you live in, there's a good chance that we can pay you out a little bit of the fee that we charge the client on those fee-based uh, securities as well. So again, it's a really great opportunity. If you do um, have any clients you might be interested in getting over to us, or maybe you're interested in getting your 65 or interested in our platform, go ahead and answer yes to the question that's up on the screen right now. And that'll generate a call from one of the gentlemen over on the wealth management team. Again, just a really great opportunity. We think it's important to give you guys these services. We think it's important to make sure that your clients stay with you for as long as we can keep them there. And we think that that's a big value of something that we can offer our agents is being able to help support them on that front. Uh, the good news is if you're studying for your 65, refer clients to us. As Soon as you get that exam passed and get registered somewhere, we will transfer all those clients directly to you. So good way to kind of build some potential AUM while studying for that exam as well. If you haven't answered yet, if you go ahead and do that, we're gonna get going to the next screen here. Oh, this is an exciting one too. I am very excited to announce that we did ha uh, just announce our uh, next top producers trip. It's gonna be in 2022, and we are gonna be doing a Mediterranean cruise. So uh, qualification, started in and actually in december of last year and actually is going to run through june of next year so we got plenty of time well over a year to qualify four and a half million gets you and a guest um you know on the mediterranean cruise um really excited about as you can see kind of the agenda you're going to start in rome and end up in uh venice a couple stops in croatia greece montenegro you got a lot of great stops in there so we're really excited about this 
we've been itching to travel. We had to cancel our last top producers trip. So I think it's, uh, we feel pretty confident by August of next year, um, we should be COVID free on that part of it. And we're really, really excited about it. Hope to be our la largest convention. Um, the good news is that every piece of business you write with IMES is gonna get you trip credits of some sort. So annuities work dollar for dollar. On the single premium life side, for every dollar, it's like times 1.3. For target premium, I think it's times like 11 and a half. And then there's some ratios from Medicare as well. But if you need the details, give your marketer at IMES a call. They'll be happy to get that out. But again, we're super excited about it. Um, Want to fill the boat with our people. And it's, if you haven't been on one of our trips, you're really missing out. It's a really nice family feeling. We're a family-owned company. We want that family feeling across the board. So we're super excited about this trip and we'd love to see all of you aboard. So with that, I know you're all sick of hearing from me. I am gonna hand this over to Miss Carrie Freeberg again. For those of you who joined us a little later, um, Carrie is um, the head of product or vice president of product development over at Silac. So she's the one who puts these uh, products together, studies these index, finds out what the best fit is for um, people. So she's gonna be here talking today about uh, the Credit Suisse Raven Pack, where it fits in their portfolio. And with that, Carrie, I'm gonna hand it over to you. Perfect, thank you so much, Laura. Thank you for having me on today. Really, really excited to share with all of you this brand new accumulation index we have um, that we are in, that we have added to Teton and Denali new money as well as renewals as, as well as for, you know, reallocations for Enforce too. So with that, let's go ahead and hop to it. So um, as Laura said, you know, I had a product development at Silac, And so whenever I'm on these, I like to take you all behind the scenes just a little bit and let you know the why for why we decided to come out with something like this. Um, we're not looking to be a company that has 15 indexes and you know there's a million options for you to choose from. We're very, very intentional and strategic to make sure that everything that we add to our products is you know at our very high standards and is really rounding out that accumulation story that we have. So we're gonna talk about why, get into how the index works a little bit and then take a step back, kind of get into the details and then quickly come out of them so that we can go through a concept called clarity and the chaos that we really like for the Raven Pack index. And we're gonna get in the numbers and show you all the great performance that we see from this index. So first of all, let's talk about why we went down this path. I'm gonna start by taking us back to May of 2019. For those of you that were working with us back then, this was when we were getting ready to release our Teton indexed annuity line, our very first line of indexed annuities. And looking back, we should have known that something was coming because this was an eerily calm economic environment. And when we worked on setting rates every month, we meet with our investment banks and we see how much does it cost to buy all of the upside of the S&P. And back in May of 2019, they came back with some of the lowest prices, the cheapest cost that we had ever seen. And they said that buying all the S&P at that point cost 6%. Typically it's eight, or so. Um, well, if we have an option budget, I'm using this as an example, every product we have is a slightly different option budget, but if we have an option budget of three and the S&P costs six, guess what? We can afford half of it. That's where those 50% par rates come from. The calculation's really that easy. We had some products with 60%, we're gonna stick with 50 for this example. And if you have a volatility control index like Atlas, the par rate right then would have been around 100%, okay? Now we're going to fast forward one year until May of 2020, and boy, had things changed, right? We were right during COVID, um, we were in the middle of a big volatility spike. Volatility in May of 2019 was around 15, 17%. One year later, depending on the day, we are at 40, 60, 80 percent what does that mean guess what the cost of buying the s p went up quite a bit instead of it being six percent it was 10 sometimes 11 12 percent well we talk about how we're a level option budget company right so once someone once a policy gets issued we hold that budget level that's exactly what we did so we had that three percent we still had to three percent to spend but now because the cost of the s p had almost doubled we could only afford 30% of it. That's where those lower par rates came from. 
And what we really got to see very, very clearly is that the S&P is great, but it is volatile. And how that volatility is managed is through setting those caps, setting those par rates. Meanwhile, indexes like Atlas, the volatility is controlled within the index itself. And guess what? Those Atlas par rates didn't have to change. So we took this lesson to heart and we were very, very excited that we had the S&P and Atlas. And so that you all had an index strategy available that wasn't on the S&P if those par rates on the S&P were just too low for you at that point in time. But we knew we needed to get to work and have more. So what we did was we said, okay, we want to find another index that can bring consistency to the US economy. Atlas is a global index, it's been doing fantastic, but we wanna make sure that we have another strategy tied to the US economy that could be as consistent as the Atlas index. So we got to work on that. Then the second component that we wanted to work through was trying to, again, have another lesson be learned from what we were going through with COVID. And we've been dealing with this information overload state of mind for a long time, but it hit kind of a new peak with COVID because life was changing so quickly. And so what we were asking ourselves is, are our indexes set up to respond so quickly? And here's, here's an example. So one of the things that we were kept hearing, especially last spring, a year ago, is that the market isn't responding rationally to information. It's not responding in the predictable way that we were used to. For example, labor report comes out, unemployment hits an all-time high, market barely responds. Why is that? Well, what we also heard at the same time is this notion of investor sentiment and the thought that investor sentiment how we investors are interpreting and responding to the information out there may be a better predictor of financial results than traditional you know, labor reports, et cetera. So again, we wanted to kind of learn from that and say, okay, we need to make sure that this new index will work during traditional economic environments, but will also be able to respond and react quickly if we are in kind of new territory that we haven't seen before. We, we took some steps down this path with our Atlas index. Atlas uses some very traditional methodology as well as some newer methodology called momentum and trends to take into account current information. We wanted to see if we could kind of take that to the next level with this next index offering. So we got to work, okay? We met with our banks, we reviewed a number of indexes and this is kind of the hard part is then making sure that these great ideas that so many of the investment bank partners that we have fit into what we're trying to do at SILAC. And these are our goals for every, every index annuity that we come out with. So clean and simple for indexes, I'll just tell you, it's hard. These are complicated. These are complicated things. For clean and simple, our bar is, when you take a step back from all of the technicalities, is the index intuitive? Okay, so that's what we're looking for. Again, no unnecessary distractions kick butt performance as usual from Psylocke and consistency tied to the US economy. So we went through all of that and we were very, very excited that we settled on the Credit Suisse Ravenpack Artificial Intelligence Index. You're going to see the accumulation that we've seen out of this index has been fantastic. It is a true complement to what we're already doing to the S&P and Atlas. This is not a replacement for either of those. We love those two indexes. We love our third index now too. And it is going to give you a solution tied to the US economy during those volatile times that you know true S&P strategies may have to change a bit just because of volatility. And it, op it has some new techniques we're going to walk through so that it can respond very, very quickly, even if we are in you know, economic times that, that we maybe haven't seen before. And again, it's all about consistency tied to the US economy. So with that, let's take a look um, at a quick video. Laura, do you hear the video? No, I do not. Oh, shoot. Okay. 
Tell you what, it's always kind of a struggle making sure that all of this audio is working right. Okay, you know what, we'll go ahead and move on. But I'll show you where you guys can see the video, um, the video a little bit later. Okay, so let's get into how this works. So first of all, who is Ravenpack? So this is a third party that we work with, um, or this is a third party that Credit, Credit Suisse partnered with. And what Ravenpack does is they are a leading provider of cutting edge technology that is analyzing all of the financial news out there in the market, categorizing it, organizing it by companies, by sectors, by all of that, and then determining within milliseconds if that financial news is good or bad for the company. Here's where they come into play. You know, the other day I Googled Tesla, financial news for Tesla, 450 million hits. There is no way that a single person or a team of people could analyze those news articles to really see, okay, what is the projection based on current information? What is the financial outlook for Tesla or any other stock? It, you know, with the amount of information we have available at our fingertips now, it's just got, it's just too hard to do that. So that's where Raven Pack comes in and their technology is doing that for us, doing that for financial firms across the world. And ultimately they are analyzing over 98% of the investable global market. You can go out to their website at ravenpack.com and, um, and that's where you, know, you can kind of see some of this technology at work. In fact, they have a really cool COVID dashboard that, um, that kind of shows you these news articles coming in and how they're analyzing it and what, how they're interpreting that, what, you know, what they're interpreting that to mean for financial markets, et cetera, coming up. So then the index provider is actually with Credit Suisse, who's been a fantastic partner for us. You know, we like to do things a little bit different at Silac. They've been very innovative with us, coming up with lots and lots of solutions. They partner with Ravenpack to really bring this cutting edge technology to our space. Credit Suisse has a great history dating all the way back to 1856. Um, and again, they've just been a tremendous partner. So what the index itself does, again, it's US based. So it is focused on the 11 S&P 500 sectors. And based on the analysis that the index does, all of the formulaic approach behind the scenes, is it is allocating to the top four sectors of the US economy, ultimately, okay? And then it controls its volatility through its bond components. So this is a big deal for us. Whenever we are working on an index, we really wanna make sure that the first step for volatility control is not cash when cash is the key volatility control component, then that means that your client's dollars just aren't working for them. So we're really excited that we have bond two and 10 year US treasury bonds. Here's the four steps. We're going to walk through each of them. So we're gonna get into the details just a little bit and then we're gonna come back out. So the Raven Pack Index is all about sentiment. This might be a new word for you, okay? It sounds technical, it's not. What sentiment is, is based on that analysis that the Raven Pack technology is doing, it's determining whether current financial news is positive or negative for each company in the S&P 500. That's not overly technical. What's technical is how we get there and the technology that Raven Pack is using behind the scenes. And again, like I said before, many, many are now believing that investor sentiment can be a better predictor of performance. So the index itself is doing this sentiment analysis for every single company in the S&P 500, and then it's aggregating that information by sector. So let's take a look. We're gonna look at one of the companies in the S&P, Hershey. Hershey is in the consumer staples sector. Here's a few recent articles about the Hershey company. So just to kind of give you an example, the index itself, you know, it's saying, okay, Hershey's accused of not upholding sustainability efforts. That's bad news. They're gonna come out with a new chocolate bar. We don't know if it's good or bad. Their sales are beating forecasts. Great news, demand is up. People are making more s'mores. Good news, facing social media backlash, bad news. Okay, so it's going through all of that every day and ultimately determines that the sentiment score for Hershey's right now is positive too. Then what do we do with that? We do that for each company and then bring it in to each sector. So here is the sentiment score for a number of other companies that are in that consumer staples sector. So here we have Procter & Gamble, big company. They do a lot of staple products, positive five. 
Walmart, positive seven. We've got Estee Lauder down here, makeup company. Guess what? People haven't been going out as much, needing to wear as much makeup. They're minus two. So some sentiment scores can be negative. Clorox, positive 15. Guess what? We've said peace out to all of those organic cleaning products. We're saying bring on the bleach, bring on the chemicals. We're going to kill some bugs, um, positive 15. And then there's our Hershey, a positive two right there. So then we have to figure out how to get to the overall sector scores, the overall sector score, positive or negative. And what we do that is we just weight each one of those company sentiment scores by the size of that company, by its market capitalization. So here's those same scores. Here you see Procter & Gamble makes up 20% of the consumer staple sector. So it's definitely going to set the tone. And then you have a company like Clorox, who's doing fantastic, positive 15, but it only makes up 3%. So it has to work really hard to make a difference. And at the end of the day, um, at this point in time, the sector score for consumer staples was 445. So now we have to see, okay, well, relative to the to all 11 sectors, is this a good score or a bad score? So then the next step is to determine the top four sectors. So the top four are merely based on the top four sector scores that we just went through the sector score 445 for Hershey's. Then the index decides how much we're actually going to allocate to each one of those top four. And this is really determined by the size and stability of that sector. So I kind of think of this as step one of the volatility control, because we might have a sector that has just, it is on fire and it might have a sector score of a hundred, but gosh, you know what? It's volatile. Last quarter, it didn't do so hot. Um, well, if we allocate everything to it, the volatility of the index is going to be high. So what's that going to, it's going to end up backfiring on us because we're going to have to put a lot in bonds to get the volatility down to 5%. So this is a key component because the, 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 the sector that has that's the most stable gets more of the allocation so that our volatility is able to be in line, okay? Um, and the big thing here is that this is forward thinking. So it's looking at all of that data, all of those sentiment scores and determining which sectors are positioned for performance in the next quarter. And this whole process occurs quarterly. So here's the 11 sectors. We get to the top four. There you go. Okay, it's that simple. Then we just, every day, we dial in for the overall volatility to target that 5%. And this is where we allocate in and out of the two and 10-year U.S. Treasuries as necessary to get to that 5%. Okay, so that's how it works. Now what we're going to do is we are going to step through the chaos of 2020 and see with how this index moved between those sectors, does it make sense? So let's go back. December of 2019 is when the four sectors were determined for the first quarter of 2020. This was before COVID hit, okay? This was definitely the calm before the storm. And the index was in information technology, healthcare, financials, and communication, all right? Now, we go to March of 2020, and that's when it repositions for the second quarter. Healthcare moves up to number one. Health companies are having to figure out how to do healthcare in a virtual manner, right? And lots of investments in healthcare to analyze, research, understand this virus, and get on the vaccine path. We are all working from home, okay? Zoom, big deal. Communication sector number two. Guess what enters the top four? Consumer staples. This is kind of when I started to fall in love with this index a little bit because I did my end of world Costco run where I, you know, had all the carts and all of the stuff in it um, in April. This index was already there. It already knew that we were going to need to be purchasing hand sanitizer and masks and gloves and all of that stuff and energy entered the top four as well. All right, Q3, now this index is really bringing it home. Number one, information technology. Number two, consumer discretionary. What is that? Is that like lavish trips? Uh-uh, you know what it is? Starbucks is open again. Yes, I'm absolutely going back to Starbucks. You know what else it is? 
Amazon. We're figuring out how to shop without being able to go into all of those stores, right? I'm getting Amazon boxes on my porch multiple times a day. I, in fact, I get sad if I look out at my porch and I don't see one. Still getting consumer staples. And what else enters materials? We're working from home. We're home a lot. We want to make sure we like our home. So what are we doing? We're fixing them up. We're going to Sherwin-Williams. We're going to Home Depot. We're going to Lowe's. This right here is when it was like the lights went off on this index for me because I'm like, oh my gosh, this investor sentiment concept, what it means is this index is following our behavior. I don't need to look up news articles to see why materials entered the top four for the third quarter. I know because I went there. I went to Home Depot. I went to Lowe's. I, it's following how we are living our lives, where we are spending our time, where we are spending our money. And then for the fourth quarter, we have vaccine Lollapalooza. We've got healthcare, communication still, consumer staples, and materials. Here you see there was a lot of movement in 2020, okay? In a more of a standard year where it's not so volatile, you might not see those top four sectors change a whole lot. But it's really, really interesting that in the chaos of 2020, the movements that Raven Pack made, those adjustments, make sense of even such a crazy time like we had in 2020. All right, so now let's look at our rates. So here's our current rates for Teton. For the Raven Pack Index, we have the annual point-to-point -point par rate strategy as well as annual point-to-point -point with spread and boost. We'll talk about these here real quick in just a second. But here's the rates for Teton. Here's the rates for Denali. If you are up to speed on our rate sheet, you might notice that these adjustments are a little bit better than what we have on the Atlas Index. There's a reason for that. The um, Atlas Index ha is a global index. It has a great benefit where it rebalances between different parts of the world every single day. Super important benefit for a global index. But guess what? It has a little bit of a cost to it, okay? The Raven Pack Index, it rebalances its equity component quarterly. Guess what that means? That's a little bit cheaper. It also makes sense for a US-based economy. Index, we don't need to rebalance on a daily basis, okay? So we rebalance quarterly, a little bit cheaper. Typical SILAC fashion, what do we do? We pass that on to your clients in the form of slightly better adjustments, okay? So that's why we have the differences in those rates. I'm not gonna walk through some of these slides. It's just kind of showing how par rate works and then spread, but I do wanna talk about our boost strategy. This is a great strategy that we have on some of our products um, that I think some people don't even realize exactly how it works. So annual point to point with spread. Let me go back real quick. So this is one you all I think are familiar with where if the index goes up 10, you have a 2% spread, your client's credit is 10 minus two eight, okay? Well, some of our products here at Silac have such big option budgets that we have a negative spread. When that happens, we call it a boost. And what happens when there's a boost is whatever the index does, we actually enhance its performance and your client gets a slightly bigger credit. So if we have a 2% boost and the index goes up 10%, your client gets 10 plus two, 12. This example is important, okay? These custom indexes can have very slight losses because they're so consistent. Well, if we have a slight loss and we have a boost strategy, that boost can turn that loss into a gain. So here, if the index goes down 1%, we add two to it, we're at positive one. Your client gets a positive credit even when the underlying index was negative. However, if that index is if that index has a bigger loss than the boost, your client can still get a zero for the year. All right, so let's see what this actually means for performance. Here, before we dig into the last 10 years, I wanna show you guys the actual gains of the S&P and the Raven Pack index going back to 2005. So here's all the S&P gains, and man, I'll tell you what, the S&P index, it is volatile, okay? but it is a beautiful index. Look at these gains. And you know what? If we could afford all of the S&P, it's probably just all that we would do, but we can't. On Denali 14, we can afford 45% of it. So we have to take all of these gains and dial it back down to reality. And here's what Denali 14 has to work with, okay? Here's the Raven Pack index. Right here you see, well, it is a lot smoother than what we have on the S&P. 
but we get to take all of these gains and enhance them. And Denali 14 has 150% par rate. So we get to bring all of these up. And this is what Denali 14 has to work with. So when you put that side by side, because we use the same budget for both indexes, you should see it's kind of a mixed bag. You know, I, don't, I look at this and I'm not exactly sure which one I'd, I'd necessarily prefer. We, we just don't know. We know that they're both strong indexes. Um, and you know, some years S&P does better, some years Ravenpack does better. What we do see is that the blue line doesn't have as many zeros on it. Um, and so we're gonna see if that you know holds true for the last 10 years. But at the end of the day, this is kind of a better comparison than just looking at S&P versus Ravenpack. It's really the underlying index with its associated adjustment. So let's look at the last 10 years. Here we have a couple, S&P strategies, Atlas, and then both Ravenpack strategies. Um, this is all tied to Denali 14 crediting strategies, okay? Um, so let's see how this looks. So 10 years ago was interesting. The S&P 500 suffered a loss. Atlas is able to move to other parts of the world and be in the right place at the right time. So, and it was able to eke out a double digit gain. Look at Ravenpack. It couldn't move to other parts of the world and it's still got a double digit gain. Well, how does that work? It's because it is it was able to just allocate to those top four sectors of the US economy and not be dragged down by other ones that weren't performing and still eke out double digit. It didn't have to leave. It could stay here in the US and still get great credits because it was positioned in the right part of the US economy at the right time. Now we're gonna keep going. Great year for Atlas. Great year across the board, Ravenpack had slightly higher credits. Another great year for Atlas. Here's a year where all the indexes suffered a loss. The Ravenpack index was a slight loss and was able to have a boost. Flat year, S&P cap ones. Whew, big old year for Ravenpack, year seven. Another year where all indexes had a loss, Ravenpack had a boost. Another great year for all indexes really. And then last year, crazy year of 2020, and um, hey, we had great S&P performance and Atlas and Ravenpack even would have been a little bit better. One of the big things here, look at those last 10 years for the boost. There's not a single zero. That's where this consistent index, when you have a boost on it, it can turn those slight, what would be a zero into a slight positive. Um, so that's a big deal. Again, I'm not saying that there are never zeros, just when we look at the last 10 years that we use on our illustration, that's how it looks. So again, looking at 2020, the S&P ended up doing great last year, 15%. The issue is we can only afford 45% of it right now. So we're doing great credits of 7%, but shoot, Atlas, we've been crediting 9, 10%, and Ravenpack, we would have been crediting even a little bit north of that. Um, one of the things we look at is some of the other custom volatility indexes out there. 2020, we were super excited with the performance of Atlas. Again, Ravenpack would have done just a little, little bit better. Um, we have some great, easy, we've been trying to make things really, really easy for you all to get what you need for Ravenpack. So if you go to silocins.com slash clarity, we have some of our marketing materials loaded on there. We also have the video that I tried to show, but the um, audio wasn't working. We also have links to upcoming webinars. Here's some of our materials, all that stuff's out there. And then just a couple items here at the end. If you want to go to, if you want to look, the ticker, the index is live on Bloomberg at C, the ticker is CSRPAI5E. Credit Swiss also has a website. Here's the website. They also just loaded their client friendly video out there that you can go check out. They have some great resources out there as well. Big thing on this index, it went live October 6 of 2017. We have over three years of actual live data. Remember, we are looking at big old adjustments here. Remember, everything here at Silac is one year, no fees associated with anything. We're all about consistency here, including consistent renewals. And one thing just to keep in mind is that this index is available in all states, but it cannot be illustrated in these nine due to state illustration regulations. So, um, but clients can allocate to the index in those states. And then the last thing, so Laura talked about a super cool trip that IMS is doing. We're also doing one in 2022 to Japan. Um, unfortunately, I'm gonna skip through the video since my audio isn't working, but you are already starting to qualify for it. The qualification started July 1st, 2020. 
it goes through the end of this year. It is $5 million of issued premium. Index counts at 100%. MIGA counts at 50 and the trip is next May, the 10th through the 16th. And because this is um, you know, a, a really unique international trip, we are limiting this to the top 60 agents. You need $5 million and be in the top 60 as far as issued premium goes. And with that, Laura, that is all that I've got. Perfect. Well, thank you again, Carrie, um, for uh, joining us. I hope, you know, you guys all got some little bit more clarification on SILAC and, you know, their consistency and what they're, you know, what they're looking to do with their products and their indexes. I'm uh, really excited to be a partner with them. One thing I'm going to throw up, if you want more information and want to get contracted, have the contracting link sent to you. SILAC does have their own contracting portal. It includes all the product training on their portal when you do the contracting, so it's pretty nice. But if you want the information on the product um, and want to get that contracting link, take a look at them. Go ahead and answer yes to the question. Following the webinar, you all are going to get an email with some of the materials we covered today from my assistant, Alex uh, Gayton. So be watching for that. But if you do want that contracting link sent as well, just go ahead and answer yes. Um, I'll get that sent out to you all today. Um, and we can get, move forward with getting you set up with Silax. So with that, I really do appreciate everyone taking time out of your day today. Carrie, thank you. I know it takes time out of your day too to come join us, but we really appreciate it and hope you all have a great Thursday. Thanks, Laura. Bye. Bye.